there's something that's really starting to bug me a little bit when it comes to people who want to vlog. Oftentimes, the thing that's holding them back from doing a great job or staying consistent is just lack of time, but I have found that lack of time always has something to do with prioritization, and prioritization usually has something to do with a lot of things, but mostly money. Simply put, if something isn't bringing in the thing that you need in order to survive, such as like money or air, it's not a priority for a lot of people. It's very easy to want to do something because you see the shiny thing on the internet and you're like, I should be doing that too, that's so cool, I'll do one video and then quit and then never come back. But come on. That being said, I do think that money is a very important thing for a lot of people to start to mobilize their ability to do something, especially having that cash flow that maybe drives you and shows you that you can get results from something. And especially if you stay very consistent and work very hard at it, then maybe this could be more fruitful. All the while being completely realistic about the fact that if you're just getting started, it might be more difficult than others, obviously, because people put in the work and then they get to a point where they can make lots of money from whatever they're doing because they got so good at it. But that doesn't mean you can't start making money early on. You just have to be really creative about it and determined. So this is not for the lighthearted. You're literally talking about a business here. It may feel like you're just getting a little bit of like side money here from a fun thing you do outside of your normal job. Or maybe you're hoping this is going to build some other kind of business. But really, this is needs to be as taken as seriously as a uh, any business, no matter how you see this fitting into your life. So today I wanted to talk about making money while vlogging or making money on YouTube, if that's your venue of choice. And I'm going to talk about five ways that you can do that and some getting started advice as well for each of those things. The first way to start making money vlogging is Google AdSense. Most people think of this one first because they're pretty sure it's the only egg in everyone's freaking basket. But only the people who think that are the ones that are just so so disconnected from the ability to make money that it's not as likely they're gonna get there. I hate to say it that way, but usually if you come to me and you say, Amy, what's your CPM? I'm trying to figure out how to make Google AdSense like pay me more money. You're out of your mind. Like you might as well just go rely on an employer if you're relying on Google AdSense to be your only paycheck from vlogging, but that's just my opinion. That being said, lots of people make a lot of money from Google AdSense. The thing about it is that you do have to reach a certain level of views on your channel for it to start to pay your bills. If you're not 100% sure what this process is, Google AdSense is the ability to monetize your videos and therefore YouTube and Google make money on your content as well as you receiving a cut. So you essentially have a Google AdSense account and that's tied into your YouTube channel. My advice for getting started with Google AdSense is this, do not waste any time turning it on. First of all, you really don't want to be on any bad side of YouTube in my opinion, and if they can't make money on your channel, then they might not prioritize you that much. So that's just my opinion. I don't know that for a fact. I've never seen any data to that effect, but if I were them, I'd be like, hmm, who do I want to send traffic to? How about the people that are monetizing their channel? Also, this helps you in the sense of setting the stage for your community. A lot of people I talk to are like, I don't want to turn on AdSense because I don't want there to be another barrier in the way of somebody watching my content. That's completely fair, but that mindset ends up taking you to a place later on of, oh crap, I actually have views and a community and now there's an even bigger sort of deal if I turn on monetization, it's gonna be this like ripple effect in the community. Rather than having that moment where everyone's like, you're a sellout, which is what they say anytime you're making money ever, you might as well just set the tone early. Also, this is why YouTube Red was created. People can pay a fee every month to not see those ads and I promise you if they're passionate against that and they watch a lot of YouTube, they are likely paying that $10 per month. Likely is not the right word. It's certainly not a majority, but the people that are really going to be ticked off about it are probably going to think, okay, I could just pay for that and I wouldn't even have that problem. Also, anyone that's mad at you for making money at what you love can please 
leave the channel right away. Like, can you just get that mindset from the start? Because that's gonna help us with the rest of these. The second way to get started making money vlogging is to actually share affiliate links. So in a lot of your content, depending on what type of information you share or the type of videos that you do, there might be products throughout. So let's take a makeup vlogger or beauty vlogger, for example. There's a lot of product that ends up coming into the video. Here's what my foundation is, here's what my lipstick is, et etc. Et and so because of that, you're sharing those products, you're helping that product essentially get more sales. Using an affiliate link, you're basically making an agreement with the company without actually having to talk to them a lot of time because there's so many affiliate links available out there by saying, I'm gonna promote this product, give me a cut if people buy it. Pretty much almost everything on the planet these days seems to have affiliate links, especially information products. You can go and work with a beauty company directly and get an affiliate link. I have an affiliate link for a lot of the things that I recommend so that I don't have to necessarily negotiate with them right away. They're just happy to get any sales out of me and I'm happy to make a commission because I've actually helped a company grow rather than just saying you should just pay me. And so affiliate is really, really nice because it's a great option for getting started. You can say today, I'm going to do affiliate marketing on my YouTube channel to help me bring in some cash flow. And pretty much that means anything I talk about and recommend, I'm gonna go get an Amazon affiliate link and use it. This is like literally the easiest way to start generating revenue because all you have to do is sign up for that program. And as long as within where you live, there is an affiliate program and whatever the negotiated amount is, it just it's just defined on their site. You're simply signing up for a program similar to the way that you sign up for Google AdSense. It's so easy to just say, okay, I'm recommending this Apple Watch. I'm gonna go get the Amazon affiliate link for this Apple Watch so that if someone decides to buy it, I will be able to kind of move my video business forward a little bit. And so that's what you would do instead of going to the Apple website because obviously Apple doesn't do affiliate. Okay, so when I said everybody does affiliate, not Apple. My getting started tip for this is just go and try to find affiliate links on Amazon for the products you've already been talking about forever and simply integrate that as a part of your process. You could even go back to previous content and swap out old links with the new affiliate link so that if there's anybody discovering that content in the future, they're gonna click on that new link and that's your affiliate link. So if you did, you know, I did an Apple Watch review, oh, I linked to the Apple site and now I'm gonna link to my affiliate. You're probably not gonna get as much traction unless that video is taking off in search or referral for some reason, but at least then you have that in there. The other very, 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 very important thing we have to talk about going forward and especially here with affiliate links is you must disclose that you are using them. So that can take place in the content and so maybe if you're going back to old content you need to throw up like an annotation or something that says, hey, the links are affiliate or you can put that disclosure in the description. This is very, very important because legally, as someone that is making money on someone else's transaction, you have to talk about that. You have to let everyone know for you to be in the right as a content creator. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to take a break because Elton just kicked back in. My third tip for getting started with making money vlogging is to arrange a sponsorship. Kind of similar to the affiliate thing, but you're actually gonna need to communicate with the company in order for them to be a sponsor. And usually they are going to pay you to do the video about whatever it is that they sell or something that's going on with them. Most of you are probably familiar with sponsors. We see a lot of content on YouTube and usually they're doing the same kind of disclosure that I talked about with affiliate that a video is sponsored and that you need to know that going into it because legally you need to know that video was created and a little bit with the motive behind a sponsor being a part of it. So as a consumer, you need to know that. And so as a content creator, it's your responsibility to disclose that. Sponsors are tricky for a lot of people because they're trying to figure out, do I have enough followers? Do I have enough views? Do I have enough this or that in order to arrange a sponsor? And I can understand why that would hold you back a lot of the time because you always feel like, oh, I'm not there yet. They're not gonna see any value in me, so I'm not going to start on this yet or expect anything. I actually think that's the wrong 
mentality to have. And I think partially the reason why this is a problem at this point is because there's things like socialbluebook.com and things that are actually really nice resources and probably give you a good idea of where you could price things and how to communicate with a sponsor. But I also think that it can be devaluing of a lot of people whose opinion does matter. And maybe you only have 10 people watching your videos, but you have a little bit of influence over those 10 people who trust you and come back every time. And I don't think that that's something that you can really just shrug off and say it's not worth anything because if when it comes down to it, that could actually move the needle in a lot of ways. So my issue with this is for those brands that are reaching out to creators and saying like, oh, we would like to put a price tag on a video for you and, and that's what we think you're worth. I mean, I've had somebody come to me and say, we want you to review our product, do a complete tutorial about it. Beginning to end, it's about our product and we're gonna offer you $150. Like this was in the last six months that this happened. And I just thought, you must think so little about the people that watch my videos that you would offer me something like $150. Like. Trust me, I know what it's like to need $150, okay, to pay the light bill. I know what that's like, and I am not saying that that is just a small amount of money. But these days, where a brand has so much of a marketing budget that they would actually come to me and say, here is $150, like that's not even gonna buy my groceries this month, but I'm gonna expose you to upwards of five to maybe 10,000 people about your product, if not more than that, because it's gonna live on for a lifetime, and you actually think that I'm gonna do that? I would rather you come to me and say, we don't have a budget so that we can talk about what else you can do to provide me value, which I could definitely get a whole lot more than $150 out of in the long term in some other way that we can partner if you actually would have opened up the conversation that way. You trying to put a price tag on it and lowballing is way worse than coming at me as a sponsor and saying, we're, we don't have a budget, but what else can we do? So that's why my getting started tip for arranging a sponsorship is to actually be okay with the fact that there are lots of sponsors out there who may not have a budget quite yet, especially if maybe you're not where they have defined the limitations of who they call an influencer. Go to them instead and say, hey, I really wanna work with you. I like your product. It's perfectly aligned with what I talk about with my community. So how can I insert you as a sponsor of an episode or of a series? And what can you do to offer me value in return? Maybe that something is like they link your video in their email newsletter and that brings you some traffic. Maybe that something is that they let you do an Instagram stories takeover, which also brings you more traffic. There are other ways to make a sponsorship happen. It doesn't have to necessarily be with money, but that's going to set the stage for how you work with sponsors in the future. And then when you do want a paycheck, you're able to say, hey, Here's how I usually do things and show them samples of your previous sponsors, which you arranged with other terms, but they don't need to know that. If you want sponsors, start acting like it right now. I'm sorry if there's somebody like yelling in the background now, I'm getting sick of trying to film this video and there being a dress rehearsal in the background. The fourth way that I recommend you start making money vlogging is to offer consulting. So depending on the type of content that you create and the information that you provide, you ideally are becoming a thought leader in your space, a potential an expert in your industry and so that leaves room for you to be able to consult with people and offer them advice as to how you can help in my situation it's very meta people watch my videos and then they're like you do good job making videos can you help me with that and I'm like sure so I have one-to-one -one vlogging clients I have group coaching clients and I also have larger companies that are clients in my newer company called aftermark where they integrate more of a strategy into their existing plan but these are all the different ways that I can offer consulting and they're all three different revenue models my getting started tip for this is to make sure that you have a place for people to learn more about potentially hiring you so make sure that's always in your description box is it a page on your website and something with more information on how they can get in contact with you. Maybe they fill out a survey first, make that happen. And the fifth way to get started making money vlogging is to actually just sell your own products. Sorry, my battery died because literally this concert outside is making this take hours. So to be expected. A lot of you might actually be watching this because you do have a product and you're hoping to sell more of it and the videos are 
hopefully going to help get that word out. This is a fantastic option for that, and especially if you're working those videos into your own content strategy and not simply hiring influencers, you're really covering a lot of bases that are helping you get exposure. My getting started tip here is to remember that your vlogs are not commercials, they are content. They are an opportunity to provide value and get in front of people who otherwise would never have looked at you or your product or whatever it is that you do. So remember to keep that in mind. How do you get on someone's radar now with their current line of thinking, what they're Googling, what they think about, the kind of entertainment that they want, so that they will in turn be curious about you and your product and potentially that next step. Allow this place, this venue, this medium to be an opportunity to build those relationships and start to drive those potential leads down the line for converting product. That being said, don't shy away from the product in the description and in other ways and just let people know where they can find out more about you with your website and all of those things pretty much anywhere, especially those featured links on your YouTube channel or in the description, you can do pretty much anything down there. Those are five ways you can make money vlogging if you're just getting started. I just wanted you to feel like you have options. It doesn't matter how big you are, it doesn't matter what everybody else is telling you. If you don't start thinking about the monetization side of things early on, it's much more difficult later. I can't tell you how many times I've had a call with a YouTuber who grew and grew and grew and they worked really hard on their art, but then when it came time to talk to sponsors or, or figure out how to integrate a brand, they really got paralyzed by that because it felt so unnatural. It shouldn't be unnatural, it should be a total fit into what you're doing and you should not have to justify the fact that you can make money in order to mobilize this thing that you care so much about. That's the dream, that's the life. If you want that life, go after it. Don't shy away from it. Don't let everybody tell you that it's the wrong thing to do. I think this is a super important video at this point in time because I feel like the state of influencer is very interesting. We're finding that there are people who started out of a bedroom or in their apartment with a typical camera that are becoming some of the most influential people in the world. We don't have to see Matthew McConaughey driving a certain car anymore. Somebody else could be doing it and for brands that's really good news and for you that's really good news but as a viewer you want to be able to trust the source no matter what and as a content creator you want to feel like your community accepts you for the content that you create and the brands that you end up aligning with in turn but until you're transparent about that and you should be from the very 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 start it's going to be more and more difficult for you to integrate but you don't have to wait you've just like I said gotta get creative. These are five ways that I came up with really quickly. I was actually thinking this could be somewhat of a series because there are a lot of ways to make money sort of creating content and creating value for people through video and vlogging and YouTube and all of that. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Is this something you want to learn more about or should we go in a different direction in terms of what you want to learn about? vlogging. Happy to accommodate. That's what I'm here for. That's all for today, socials. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you want to help me and any other creator to thrive at what they do, especially on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and subscribe for good vibes. And until next time, remember to go after the life that you want. Cheers. Of course, as soon as I sit down to film this, because I was like, oh, they're gonna do a concert tonight. I better film early. Oh, right, there's dress rehearsal. You messed that part up. Don't do that tonight.